What inspired me to write this book entitled The Counter Revolution of 1776, Slave Resistance and the Origins of the United States of America is that I was dissatisfied with the traditional narrative about the founding of the United States, which I've referred to as a creation myth. I've referred to it as the immaculate conception theory of the founding of the United States, because it tended to give short shrift, not only to black people, but to Native Americans. Part of the thesis of my book is that what inspired the rebels to revolt and break the law by seceding from the British Empire is they were dissatisfied with the Royal Proclamation of 1762-1763, where in London expressed displeasure at continuing to wage war against Native Americans to seize their land, oust them from the land, and then turn it over to real estate speculators like George Washington. And then secondly, there was Somerset's case in London in 1772, which by the way is captured in the well-distributed movie Bell, B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, starring the Anglo-South African actor, Gugu Mbatha Roy. Somerset's case fundamentally abolished slavery in England, a decision that slave owners led by George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Patrick Henry et al. felt would leapfrog the Atlantic and cast doubt upon their vast holdings in enslaved Africans. And rather than see that eventuate, they chose to break the law and revolt and secede from the British Empire. Then, as I deal with in an epilogue, what happens is that the United States basically becomes the captain of the international slave trade, dominating the slave trade to Cuba by the 1790s, the slave trade to the biggest market of all, Brazil, by the 1840s, which, by the way, those two projects are captured in my book, Race to Revolution, the United States and Cuba during slavery and Jim Crow. And the other book is uh, The Deepest South, the U.S., Brazil, and the African slave trade. In, in any case, London, on the other hand, after it lost its major market for the exportation of enslaved Africans, speaking of North America, uh, moved to exit from the African slave trade, which it did in 1807, of course, prompted by the Haitian Revolution, 1791 to 1804, and then exited from slavery itself by the 1830s, decades before the so-called Revolutionary Republic did, under the gun in 1865. Well, that's why I mentioned Bell. Uh, Bell is a very interesting film. And uh, I would use that film because it raises very searching questions akin to my book. I would also use the film Book of Negroes, which is a joint Canadian, South African, and BET in the United States, Black Entertainment Television production, that presents a version of the revolt against British rule that's congruent with my story. And so I think using those two films help to flesh out the theses of my book. And it also helps to shed light on why it is that folks outside of the United States oftentimes <laughs> look at the United States differently than people in the United States. Because as noted, the Book of Negroes is a BET South African and Canadian production. Bell is basically a Black British production starring the Anglo-South African actor, uh, Gugu Mbatha Roy, as I just mentioned. And I think that that raises questions as well. And then you might want to contrast that with the Hollywood film, The Patriot, starring Mel Gibson, which has a difficulty, to put it mildly, uh, dealing with the slavery question and the Black question as it tries to tell this sweeping story about liberty and freedom. And until we have an honest uh, inventory of our history and an honest evaluation of these past events, that shape the present, I think you're gonna to continue to see these sorts of slings on camera. You're gonna to continue to see unrest. You're gonna to continue to see a lot of alienated uh, black students in particular. Mm -hmm.